What is going on, YouTubers? Jay here from MJ Tech. Today, coming with another e scooter. We are talking about the Awesome Leopard, which is actually quite awesome based on the price. So, we have a 48 volt system. This is a 1000 watt motor on the rear with 10 inch pneumatic tires as well. It has a max torque capacity of 25 newton meters. It comes with a battery capacity of 20.8 amp hours, 48 volts, 998 watt hours. It charges in about 10 hours. It does have a BMS protection system inside of the battery. Then we get an uphill capacity of 25%, which is quite impressive. It does come with a single charger, not like other scooters at this category that typically come with two chargers. This one only has one. It does come with front and rear disc brakes, and we also get e-brakes thanks to the motor, and you can change the settings as well. It does have an LCD display, four inches, and it does have a bore diameter of about 8.3 inches and a height of 9.4 inches, which is quite awesome. The frame is made out of aluminum alloy. It is IP54 certified. It can hold up to 265 pounds, and that's quite impressive as well. It has a maximum range of 52 miles, and then you get three different speed levels on here, which is nine miles per hour for one. For number two, you get 22 miles an hour, and then mode three, you get 34 miles an hour. And the recommended height for the rider here is between 4'8 and 6'7. So that's 4'8, uh, 4 feet 8 inches, or 6 feet 7 inches, which is quite tall. You do have an adjustable handlebar as well. You have three different positions, and this one comes with a seat included already and the bracket to install it, but you have the option to opt out of it and remove it if you wish to do so. It comes with a front headlight, a rear tail light, turn signals, horn. You also get suspension on the front and the rear, and you get adjustment for preload, but that's about it. So the tires do come for all terrains, which is nice as well. But keep in mind, like I said earlier, we do have a, a single motor system here. And for the brakes, they are mechanical. So you don't get any hydraulic brakes. So in certain things, they cut out some corners, I would say. But overall, for the price, $950, you are getting an awesome scooter that I consider to be decently fast. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and continue with the assembly of the scooter. To position the steering bar, it's quite simple. You simply undo this counterclockwise. This is one of the mounts. It has like a two mounting system. And then you have this pin, which also needs to come out as you are getting it straight. So you simply lift it, pull the pin, it goes right in. And then now you insert this metal piece that goes here sustaining the steering bar. And we simply tighten it up clockwise of course and that's it super sturdy to install the handlebars quite simple all you have to do is undo the bracket for the stem it has four number five allen screws i use the impact drill as it makes it a little bit faster now we simply position the handlebar like so and now since the display can be moved around you're going to have to kind of like play with it a little bit so that we can get the bracket through. As I demonstrated earlier, inside of the box, we got the seat in which you can fold the actual seat itself, which is super cool. And there's like a little tab back here. Simply lift it and it goes right in and then lift it again to fold it. Very convenient, we have seen this system before. We have, of course, the manuals. Then it came with some screws. Now this is for the seat post or the seat uh, bracket. You have to get this hooked up on the scooter itself so that you can hook up the seat, which goes on like this. And yes, guys, it came with a tire inflator and also the charger. So to continue the assembly, let's go ahead and install the seat. The screws are inside of this bag where the tools are. It should come with four of them and from the looks of it, they are a size number five Allen. This latch goes pointing towards the back or the rear suspension. And then you grab your four number five bolts in which they come already with thread locker on them. That's a plus. 
If not, you can add a little bit yourself. And then you simply start positioning all the screws. Again, if you guys have a power tool, it makes things a lot easier. You think that hand tool is quite hideous in my opinion. So there we go. Just got all of them in. Make sure they're tight. For the seat, you simply undo the tensioner, put the seat through like so, and then kind of keep it straight. Put it back on the tensioner. If the tensioner is too loose, you can always tighten it up. It's more like a regular standard screw. Simply go clockwise and that'll make it tension a little more. And to fold it, all we have to do, simply fold the seat here towards the back. Make sure you bring the seat completely down as well. Now we undo the latch here towards the bottom. Now keep in mind that on the opposite side you have a little pin that you have to push in order to take this off. And now you simply fold it afterwards. So it goes on like this. And this is just a better view of how it looks when it's completely folded. To me, this scooter looks fantastic, guys. All we have to do now is simply inflate the tires to the proper specs. Make sure that you check every single bolt, nut, screw, whatever you guys want to call it. Check everything, make sure that nothing is loose and if everything is good to go now we can jump into the power section of the scooter which is the display how to get it started how to get it set up so on and so forth to charge it you have a flap on the front which i like because it makes it so that no debris gets in there you simply lift the little cover here which is spring powered as you can tell and that's where you connect the charger just in case you guys want to lower the handlebar because your sitting position is either too low or you simply want a better riding position but well, you can do that here with the awesome leopard by undoing this tensioner then you press on this little pin and then you can bring it down you have three positions available that will be the lowest and then of course three positions going up at this price point we get mechanical brakes on the front and on the rear as well they don't seem to have a name brand and so far from what i tested a little bit they are functional with the front and rear suspension, you can adjust the preload, but that's about it. Here we have the front one as well. So you can see we can adjust the preload, but nothing more than that. For my surprise, the rear seat, the post itself, has a suspension as well. So moving along here to the handlebar, we have several different controls on here. We know that we have the brake levers on the left and the right. You have a on and off switch for the headlight, tail light. You have your turn signals as well, together with the horn. Then you get your thumb throttle with a parallel key. You have the ignition switch. And finally, the display. To get it started, you flick the switch to the right, press and hold the power key for about two seconds. And this is what you guys are prompted with. So the first thing we have is the voltage. That's uh, 50.4. We had the battery indicator along with the odometer and the trip. Then you get your speedometer, the modes. So you have mode one, two, and three. One takes you to nine miles per hour. I believe that mode two takes you up to about 22 miles per hour. And then mode three takes you up to 34 miles per hour, which is quite fast if you guys ask me. Keep in mind that we only have a single motor on the back, which is a 1000 watt 48 volt motor. And that's why it says single on here because that's all we can do. Now we do have the P settings. In order to activate the P settings, all you have to do is press this button three times. So if you do that, now we have P01. This is for your kilometers or miles. So in my case, I'm gonna leave it at miles per hour. It is all listed on the manuals in case you guys have any doubts about this. And uh, that's pretty much it. So again, if we press it once, we can change the modes, one, two, and three. And uh, that's it for the settings, guys. It is a very simple scooter. So now we're going to charge it. Then we're gonna head on to the streets and see how it performs. I'm quite excited about this one. 24 hours later. Now that we have arrived here at the park, I forgot to mention that there's like a little yellow hook that connects when you uh, fold the scooter. It connects here to the rear side where your foot rests for the back side. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but to unhook it, you simply move it towards the front and this is what i'm talking about this little hook connects right here so anyways guys here the first thing we're about to do momentarily uh, is do a speed test now i don't have sufficient space on this handlebar to install a phone holder 
but right now we are actually starting the speed test this thing is perfect when it comes to the calibration between the display I don't know if you guys can see that but it is claiming nine miles an hour and my GPS it is also claiming nine miles an hour this is for mode one mode two and three are the best to use so this is mode two right here and uh, this one will take us let's see so, so far the display and the GPS they're claiming the display is claiming 24 the GPS is claiming 22 so there's a little bit of a discrepancy right there all right so we're doing 21 miles an hour the company is claiming that we can do up to 32 so let's put it on mode 3 now now this is fully charged guys just keep that in mind so this is mode 3 now this road right here is going on a little incline a little bit it's hard to notice it especially on video so right now we're doing uh, 24 25 and we are running out of road but I'm gonna make a u-turn and test that again so this is 26 let's see maybe it'll hit 27 before we get there now even though I felt it going a little bit faster it didn't so we're gonna continue on mode 3 here and now we're gonna go back and see how fast we can get it to go now I gotta say guys uh, while we are speeding here this thing has an amazing design I, I like it all the way around I like how the suspension looks I like how everything looks here especially in the front we have a swing arm style suspension it looks fabulous guys so here you can see that it is a different story now we're doing 27 so that kind of proves that we were going on a slight incline we're doing 28 also the wind now is on our favor the wind is blowing the opposite direction or it was blowing the opposite direction before but right here guys we can see we are doing about 29 miles maybe it can get it 30 yep there we go we just hit 30 so that's the maximum speed we were able to get before we ran out of road guys while continuing on mode 3 uh, something I did notice right out of the bat is that this display is not friendly under the Sun it tends to uh, kind of dim out now I have sunglasses so if I take them off I can see a little better and the Sun is right now hitting straight down so here I'm just gonna give you on mode 3 a little quick demo on the off-road capabilities keep in mind that these are all-terrain tires and they are three inches wide so yes we can do a little off-road now having dual motors makes things a little bit more secure in the sense that you're not gonna get stuck uh, but the power here guys is amazing I'm sitting down and that seat suspension and the rear shock here is doing a tremendous job I'm hardly feeling anything on my Botox guys I mean you can notice it on my voice my voice is not uh, sounding you know like when you hit uh, rough terrain it kind of sounds like like you're shaking uh, you can hear my voice is still normal that's because that rear seat is doing an amazing job I'm telling you guys I can promise you you will love the rear seat on this scooter so the off-road test went like butter guys super smooth no complaints there here we're doing a uphill test right now and you guys can see that I'm doing it at about 22 miles an hour on mode 3 20 miles an hour so it does get a little lazy in the sense that you know speed does decrease it's not like with other dual motor 48 volts uh, scooters that they tend to go a little faster especially when you have it on dual motors but it's obvious to say guys that we have two motors so I mean for this little motor here 1000 watt I don't have any complaints so here I am on the roughest side of the incline I would say this is like more like an 18% uh, percent incline and I'm starting from scratch and you guys can see that it's picking up speed we're doing 10 11 all right 13 14 and it just continues to pick up guys so on the hill side it did as advertised it is super smooth when you're riding at faster speed like right now I'm doing 28 miles an hour 29 and there's no wobbles there's no uh, you know 
know, there's no, uh, what do you call that, balance issues. It feels very nice and smooth. I'm telling you guys, it is butter smooth. Off-road and on-road, it feels super nice. The handlebar is barely vibrating or anything. I mean, I'm telling you, this thing is crazy good, guys. I can't believe this is only 950 bucks. Not including that, well, maybe in the future they can add a key one on there and you can probably get it for even less money. So this is a place here, guys, where you had to get a license at this park. This is the Dyers Park in, uh, in West Palm Beach, Florida. And so uh, right here, I'm about to meet. Well, oh, that was a big pothole. I didn't see that. But right here, we're about to see some of the people with the hobby. Um, he's flying a jet right now, an RC jet. And, uh, and this is amazing, guys. Uh, I can't wait to get my own license. You all know that I like the RC hobby stuff. But here, this is like a more serious stuff. Like I seen planes that I've uh, encountered people here off video, of course, and I've have asked them, you know, how much their aircraft costs, and it's like five thousand, ten thousand, and more. I mean, some of them are about the size of uh, like a bicycle, like a regular twenty-inch bike or so. You know, they're quite big, and they even have a little runway uh, so they can take off right over there I can see a jet that is probably about to take off I'm not sure if you guys can see that but it's right over there man that looks so cool a few moments later it has mechanical disc brakes which are much better than drum brakes uh, for maintenance purposes so pretty soon here we're gonna do a quick stop and see how it does and then we're gonna make another stop soon to remove the seat and use it as a standing scooter. But right here, guys, I'm about to hit the brakes quite hard. And if you're not careful, you can lock the rear wheel. Going about 20 miles an hour, it took a good 10, 12 feet to come to a complete stop, which is quite normal. I think I get that even with hydraulic brakes. And I was still able to lock the rear wheel, which is an indication that these are good uh, good mechanical brakes things that we don't get with the awesome leopard well first of all we don't have dual motors second we don't have hydraulic brakes and third we don't have cruise control also here the board itself this one is almost 10 inches in total uh, width uh, something I forgot to mention that we don't get with this scooter is a dual charger. It comes only with a single charger. So as you can tell guys, they have cut corners uh, slightly a bit with this one. But that doesn't make it a bad scooter. It just makes it a budget friendly scooter for users looking to save some money. Alright guys, so now we are trying it here without the seat. Now something I did notice after getting on it is that when you put your front feet here, you don't have a lot of room for this area. You had to put it up here. You have like no choice. And I'm talking about this area here. So again, you put your front feet left or right, doesn't matter, uh, on the front. And then for the back, you can't put it around this area. You had to actually use this thing. And well, that's the real purpose of it. But some people, they like to ride it, you know, different ways. With this one, the board being a little bit shorter than other scooters. Well, I just wanted to point that out that you're not going to be able to flat foot front and back just using the board itself. You have to use this piece right here. I did increase the handlebar uh, to the maximum height which is uh, position number three and let me tell you guys what I love about the scooter and I know I've been mentioning this over and over is the handling it's like a really really smooth scooter the suspension feels great and it's quite stiff as well uh, so that's uh, preferred for road conditions or if you're riding on road and uh, for off-road you might want to go a little bit softer you can adjust the preload on it as I mentioned on the unboxing, but that's about it. You can't adjust anything else, guys. So here we're doing another hill test at 17 miles an hour using mode number three. This is the uh, steepest side of the hill right here. And it's doing it like nothing, guys. Get out of the way. 
Get out of the way! So far we have done about six, seven miles. This park is a little bigger than my other park that I like to go to. This one has a radius of I think like nine miles in total. Uh, and yeah, I've done a couple miles already and this thing is holding great. The battery still has uh, plenty of juice here. This battery is rated to last up to 52 miles in range. Now, I always tell people on most of my video, if it says 52 miles, take at least 35% out of that to be on the safe side. So, I mean, I can't do the math right now on top of my head, but I would say if it says 52 miles and you're going to ride it hard, count with like 38, 40 miles at the most. Don't go the 52 guys because you might be disappointed. That means go 20 miles one way, which is a lot, and then 20 miles coming right back, which is a lot as well. You won't find many of these on Amazon as, uh, you know, as the speed doesn't really meet standards. You know, 32 miles an hour, I think that's uh, exceeding a little bit. I think the max that we can do on a scooter legally is about 28. So just, uh, just keep that in mind guys but what I'm impressed about is that for $950 you are getting such a well-built scooter I mean I really don't have complaints when it comes to the build quality what I wish it had was hydraulic brakes but I think that's just asking for a little bit too much the price will definitely increase with hydraulic brakes and after all you can add them yourself if you want that well guys that is it for today's unboxing setup and semi review here of the awesome leopard a very affordable scooter for the speed that you're getting the build quality the overall design we can't deny the fact that this is one of the prettiest scooters that i've seen at least in a long time i mean i've had much better and faster scooters but in terms of design i love it i like the little foot part here on the back side I like how we have a swing arm style suspension on the front just like the bigger guys out there and overall guys I'm super satisfied I think it's amazing for the price plenty of speed you get up to 32 miles an hour maximum speed I like the handlebar I like the display everything that it shows it has a horn an actual horn you get turn signals headlight tail light for $950 guys I mean the only thing that we're not getting as I said before is a dual motor hydraulic brakes and also cruise control but I can live without it for sure with this being said don't forget to comment below let me know what you guys think click on the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos like this share this video like this video if you think it was helpful and I'll see you guys on my next one